I would like to talk about the PHP include statement. And I would also like to point out that php.net, this website, gives you a lot of information about every feature of the PHP language. The purpose of an include is to include another file in your code. Similar to an external CSS file or an external JavaScript file. Rather than repeating the same code over and over again, we can store that in what is called an include and call that when we need it. This does not only apply to PHP code, but it can be a very valuable tool when using HTML. I am looking at a typical HTML document. Most HTML documents have a lot of common content. For example, here we have this banner section, and we also have a navigation. The chances are that banner and or navigation would be placed on every web page in this website. We also have the footer information. The chances are this information is included on every page on your website. Therefore, should you need to modify something, you need to modify it on every page, which can be very time-consuming. Developers commonly use what are called server-side includes to include content on the web page rather than repeating it on every page over and over again. Because we are using PHP, this will be a PHP include. However, this concept exists in other languages also. I am looking at the HTML code in my editor, and here we see the code for the footer. I can remove this code and place it in an external file and save it with a .html extension. So this is what I have done. There is my footer.html, and that is the code directly cut from the original HTML document. Notice that even though this is HTML code, and it is saved as .html, we do not need to put a doc type, an HTML element, a head element, or a body. We are simply removing code from an existing document, and we will be replacing that using the PHP include. Because we are using a PHP include, my HTML file now needs to be saved as a PHP file so that we can execute that PHP code. This is my PHP include file. Notice there is my PHP delimiter, the include statement, and the name of the file. If you look at my files here, there is my index.php, there is footer HTML. This is the file that will be included. When I return to localhost, here is my index.php file. I click on it. I can see I have the footer here. If I right click and look at the view source, you can see here is all my HTML. It looks identical to what it looked like in the HTML file. Remember, PHP generates the HTML. You will never see PHP code in the browser, so you need to be working back and forth with the browser and your editor. So this is the syntax for a simple PHP include, and it is actually a very easy process. I would like to point one thing out. You will commonly see examples using the PHP extension for the include. And that is because in many times we do have additional PHP code in there. However, if it is pure HTML, you do not need to name your file .php. Simply name it .html if all it includes is HTML in that same file. On our web page, we have this small form asking the user to subscribe to the newsletter. And in our HTML code, we see the action of the form is subscribe.php. If we look at the beginning of subscribe.php, we are checking to make sure 
that this form was indeed sent via a post. We have been doing this on all of our forms. Rather than repeat the code over and over again, we could store this in an include and just call it whenever we need it. I would like to go over why we're doing that. Here I have my PHP code and here's subscribe.php. Every file has a URL or an address. So if this accidentally was loaded outside of the form, here we see the else in our if statement be executed, saying that there's a problem. If we didn't have that there, there could be an error being generated. You never want the user to see errors because they could reveal some of the underlying directory structure, and it could be a security risk. Therefore, we want to make sure that this file is indeed called from the form. So now when I click Submit on my form, I see a little test statement letting me know that I have correctly accessed the PHP file that will process the form. And here we see my echo statement inside the code for my subscribe.php. This is just a way of making sure that your files are being connected correctly. So we could take all this code out of subscribe.php and store it in its own separate file, check underscore request.php, as I have done now. Now if we look at subscribe.php, we start out with the include statement, which will include that checking that the action has been indeed sent from the form. So rather than writing that code over and over again in your future files, you could just use the include.